Welcome back, everyone. We're here with a weekend edition of the Cabral Concept called our Cabral House Calls, where it's my job and opportunity to be able to maybe step into your house, listen to your specific questions, your specific story, and try to give you that my, my unbiased opinion as to what I believe may be going on with your health, with your weight loss journey, your anti-aging based struggles, whatever it might be, and to share with you again what many other people just like you have gone through and how they've been able to overcome it. So again, I consider myself very fortunate to have now overseen multiple practices uh, where we've worked with over a quarter of a million people. And that's a lot of data that I believe that I'm able to draw upon as I give you these answers. So as long as we know that I'm not giving you any medical advice, that we're not giving you any disease treatment protocols, and that we are not trying to cure, diagnose anything, uh, then we're all set to get started with today's show. So the legal disclaimer has been given away. I always look forward to these weekend shows. I answer six questions on Saturdays and six questions on Sundays. So hopefully you tune in uh, each and every weekend for all of these different answers, uh, because the truth is that they're not always for us, uh, but they may come in very handy for a loved one. All right, so let's get started with the first question. It's from Jamie. Jamie saying, first and foremost, a thousand thank yous, and it still wouldn't be enough for you and your team. Thank you, Jamie. We really appreciate that. And I have such an amazing team. I would not be here without them, uh, without you know all the half dozen health coaches uh, with uh, Dr. Jennifer and everybody on the health coaching side. Uh, and it's just an amazing team from top to bottom, no doubt about it. So Jamie says, after having COVID quite mildly, it does seem that I have some symptoms that are still taking a bit longer to get over. And I would love to understand what is going on uh, a little better if possible. So is it to do with energy levels? I would jump on the Peloton beforehand and then walk to work feeling energized. Nowadays, if I do that, I will feel tired by 2 p.m. And when I use a lot of energy, I will get a small fuzziness in my head and a light burning in my nose. What is causing this and what, what might one do through functional medicine supplement diet to help address this and restore the low energy levels position? I follow your immunity protocol and I tested positive. And for a while afterwards, even when I had a call with Julia to ask her the above, again, I can't express how grateful I am uh, for you and have studied all of you've done to make functional ministry more mainstream and accessible to all. It has changed my life for sure. And I really enjoy being able to play little bits forward whenever I can. Keep well. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate that very much. Appreciate the kind words. means a lot to me. Um, it really does. We, we have some, a lot of people don't, I mean, we love what we do, no doubt about it. But a lot of people don't see, you know, on all sides of equal life um, and, and stephencabral.com and IHP that they can be some long days. I mean, long days trying to help people out, but really helping people out makes it all worth it. It, it, it honestly does. Uh, it's uh, very gratifying in life to know that you might play some small role in, in helping someone to overcome something and then allow them to go on to live a, a life of, uh, well, enjoyment, right? Of enjoying their life, of being able to then be of service maybe to others as well. So what's going on here with uh, this particular virus has been talked about. I'm going to get you the exact shows for you because I'm going to give you your answer. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave you hanging there. However, I want to make sure that you just know that there's a whole category that I've done on all my virus-based shows. So if we go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts, and we scroll around those fun little graphics at the top, we're going to go to a category that says latest virus updates. We can just click on that. And I will give you the ones that are going to help you the most. All right. So episode 1903 is the virus and long term illness workout program. This is the one that I specifically recorded for people just like you. Because remember, Jamie, you're not alone. Many, many people are dealing with these post viral inflammatory syndrome issues. So 1903 is a show for you. And then I also uh, want to give you the long term, nope, not the long term immunity. Let's see here. The full pandemic protocol, not that. For antiviral herbs, not that. The truth about uh, COVID antibody testing and long-term immunity, not that. Well, I will find it for you. 
Uh, you know what the best thing to do is? Actually, it's just go to cabralsupportgroup.com. There it is. I just found it. Okay. So it's episode 1776, how to deal with post-viral inflammatory issues. All right. So two shows for you, Jamie, 1776 and 1903. Now let's answer your question though. So what people seem to be dealing with, and the science is getting uh, better every day as to what they're dealing with, is post-inflammatory viral syn- post viral inflammatory syndrome. It is not unique to this particular virus. I just want to say that, okay? We see it with Lyme. We see it with Epstein-Barr virus. We see it with mononucleosis. We see it in um, all sorts of myalgic encephalomyelitis-based issues. So uh, we see it in, believe it or not, uh, like West Nile and different types of mosquito bite based carrying viruses. So malaria, it's not new, uh, but now people are experiencing it because they're experiencing this particular virus. The good news is that you will recover. So I'm very confident in that. Again, I can't provide any medical based advice, but you need to ease back in. You need to repair the mitochondria and you need to squelch the unhealthy levels of inflammation. So that is our job. That's what we need to do at a mitochondrial level and a uh, inflammatory level by following a lot of those protocols that I gave you on episode uh, 1776 and 1903. All right, Jamie? So that's what we're dealing with. That's what you're up against. The good news is it might take a little bit of time, but you will recover. Just don't overdo it. Don't exhaust yourself. And even maybe pay attention too to the um, uh, the show I just did on Thursday, episode 1938, which would be a nice one too. That was uh, based on um, low strain workouts. All right. So check that out as well. Isabel's up next. Hello, Dr. Brawl. I love your podcast, especially the weekend edition. I was wondering if you could maybe help me out with the following. I do a 16, eight intermittent fast every day. My last meal is around four or 5 PM. And during my fasting window, I only drink water. My sleep has not been great. Therefore, I want to start using magnesium and other supplements before bed. However, the purpose of my fast is to get as much autophagy as possible. So I don't want to get too many calories in or increase my blood glucose or any other hormones. Do you think that magnesium would interfere with my fast? And what other supplements do not affect the clean water fast? Thank you for answering other our questions. You are amazing, Isabel. Thank you, Isabel. Appreciate that. Uh, so here's what we can do. Um, you're doing the right thing by starting your 16-8 fast earlier in the evening. A 16-8 fast that basically skips breakfast is not ideal for many women, especially with thyroid issues or weight gain issues or hormonal issues. Um, so I like that you're stopping around four or five. That's that's an Ayurveda. That's what they did, right? So what happens if you stop at four? Well, you have eight hours until midnight, and then if you go another what eight hours. You know, yeah, that's eight. Um, yes, that's eight a.m. in the morning. So that's perfect, right? So that makes a, a lot of sense. So, okay, how can we help you? Well, magnesium should not affect your fast at all. It should not affect autophagy. It should help with detoxification, and it should actually help with blood glucose. So I have no issues with you using magnesium. I would use the full spectrum magnesium rather than the powdered magnesium, which has flavor to it, and you never know how the sweetness may affect your brain chemistry, neurotransmitters, or blood sugar levels. So I would use the full spectrum magnesium, uh, obviously formulated by Equalife, um, the formulation that I made, which is a uh, tri-formula of three different types of magnesium, which is great for absorption. And what else could you use for sleep? Well, you could use liquid melatonin uh, for sleep as well. Again, all of those are available at Equi.life. Those would be the t- first two that I start with. Super simple. Two to three capsules a um, couple hours before bed. And then liquid melatonin a half hour before bed. One or two droppers under the tongue. Hold it for two minutes. Then swallow it and off to bed you go. So all of this is able to be tracked as well, of course. I'm sure you know by all the different biometric-based meters that I've been reviewing, but you could certainly track your sleep uh, with an Aura Ring, with an Apple Watch, with a lot of ba- metrics, all right? All right, so the next question is from Denise. 
And Denise says, hi, Dr. Paul. I hope you are well and healthy. Thank you, Denise. I am, and I appreciate it. I think you're probably the only person that could clear this up for me. So here's my issue. They say that prolonged fasting stresses out the body and can lead to hormonal imbalance, especially when it comes to women. I'm a 43-year-old woman, and I love fasting. When I do a long 24-hour fast, my HRV goes up, double, uh, deep sleep doubles, Heart rate and temperature goes down and reach the best recovery score on my Aura Ring. Much better than when I eat regularly. But I am afraid that this will mess up my hormones. So can I trust that if my recovery index is okay, my hormones will be okay too and not go haywire? Or are these totally different systems that don't influence each other? I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are on this. Thanks a million for this and everything else you've done for your our community. You're the best, Denise. Thank you, Denise. Appreciate that. So this is not, um, this is, yeah, this is a great one. I'd love to be able to answer this. So we're looking at a couple things here. <clears throat> when your body is under stress, HRV will actually increase. So I just want to throw that out there. All right. So HRV is not always the best way to look at how recovered or not recovered you are. All right. But if your heart rate lowers and your temperature lowers and you get more deep sleep and REM sleep, that's a pretty good sign that your body's doing well. So in that case, HRV then could be obviously um, indicative of, of you being in a good spot. But really what you're asking me is, does a 24-hour fast mess up your hormones, especially as a female? And I've done many, many shows on this, all right? So I want you to go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. And I want you to scroll through the top and just click on the hormones one. All right. So you're going to get all the information on hormones. Then I want you to scroll through the top and click on intermittent fasting. It's literally its own podcast. Now you can find all of these on iTunes as well. So that will give you all the information you need because honestly, I'm a huge advocate of a once a week, 24 hour fast for almost anyone. I mean, there's always certain cases, but I'm just not an advocate of the 16 uh, eat fast for most women. And the reason is that I see a slowing of thyroid and estrogen dominance in many women with that simply because they skip breakfast and then they, they're stressed in the morning and then that leads to higher levels of cortisol. So it's not good. So let's say though, you're doing a, like who just asked, um, our friend Isabel. So if you're doing what Isabel is doing and stopping at four o'clock in the afternoon, after you've had three meals, breakfast, lunch, and then an early dinner, then fine. Um, so you can definitely do that. But again, most people do great at, at 13 hours, uh, 14 hours, 12 to 14 hours for an intermittent fast. So if you're doing that and then a once a week, 24 hour, it should be fine. But honestly, Denise, the only way that you really know if it's throwing your hormones out of balance is to run that stress hormones, mood and metabolism test. And you can find that at equa.life forward slash labs. All right. Elaine, uh, sorry, Eliana is up next. I'm 24 years old and very healthy eating a diet of whole foods and exercising often. I frequently have achy, sometimes sharp muscular pain in my upper back and neck. It's definitely worse with stress. And I've wondered if it's worse on the days I drink coffee. My chiropractor said exercise, I strain train a lot and caffeine both make the body more acidic, which could lead to this pain. Could you shed some, shed some light on how on this and how to lessen the pain? I do drink less caffeine now. In many days I have chai instead of coffee. However, I still experience pain most days. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to answer this. So pain, pain is for many different reasons. So there is actually a pH-based pain that's well-documented in the research. So pain can be too alkaline, too acidic, uh, but it's very, very rare, very rare because your body does, again, a pretty good job of, of maintaining that homeostasis. Uh, there is pain that's neurological, so nervous system-based. There is pain that's inflammatory muscular base. There is um, vascular based uh, pain. Then there's more alignment, which we talked about. So all of them really have to do with overall inflammation of the body. So that's really what we want to look at is what's going on, I'd say from an inflammatory standpoint. So, you know, does strength training make your body more acidic? It does you know, because you're creating acids, but your body should be able to clear those. So there's an issue if it can't clear it. That's, that's really the issue. So 
you, you copped off coffee, so it's not, you know it's not coffee because you started doing chai tea, right? And so if you still have pain, it's probably not that. But chai tea typically still contains caffeine. So what we really need to do is just say, do you have less pain when you don't consume any caffeine? And if you don't, well, caffeine could be exacerbating your nervous system, causing you to tighten up to a greater degree, causing that pain. And really what I would recommend, just because it's so naturally anti-inflammatory and balancing, is a 21-day functional medicine detox. So you can head over to eco.life forward slash detox and check that out and see if uh, I would go easy on the strength training just twice a week. And you'll still maintain results with twice a week, a Tuesday and a Friday, a uh, Monday and a Thursday would be fine. So do the 21 day detox, just two days a week of strength training, just do your normal walking and see if the pain goes away. If it does, okay, then it's related to food and inflammatory foods, uh, maybe overdoing your strength training if you're training four or five times a week right now, or just not proper, like not a good alignment, meaning your air may not be in alignment with your shoulders, which is supposed to be in alignment with your hips, which is supposed to be in alignment with your knees, which is supposed to be in alignment with your ankles. So if you draw a plumb line down the side of the body, and we used to do this uh, with, with photos for private clients, is that you should be in good alignment. If not, if the head is too far forward, like when you're staring at your computer screen, it's called cervical flexion, and now the head becomes this weight that your upper back is trying to hold on to and pull forward. I mean, think about holding you know, like a five pound weight out in front of you or an eight pound weight like your head out in front of you. It's no big deal, honestly, for like 30 seconds or a minute. You know, for anybody, after a couple minutes, you're going to feel some strain in that upper arm. Well, that's what your upper back pain as well. So you have to make sure you're in good alignment, especially looking at your phone or computer. So that's a place to start, Ileana. Hopefully that's helpful. All right, let's get in another question today. This one is from Janice. Hi, Stephen. I've listened to your podcast for quite a while now. Thank you for what you do. My question is, if my employer makes uh, the vaccines mandatory, would I be able to get a note from your office excusing me from the vaccine? I am 62 in good health, love my job and don't want to lose it, but I will not get this vaccine. I have been working from home since March 2020. I do not come into physical contact with others. This could change and they could order us back in the office. And that is my concern. Thank you for your time. All right. So uh, so first of all, I'm not a medical doctor. Um, obviously, I, I always say I'm a board certified doctor of naturopathy, right? So that's what I am. So basically, what that means is I help people find the underlying root causes of their health issues. And I do that through non-pharmaceutical means. I don't diagnose disease. I don't treat disease. And I don't say that I cure anything, right? So only medical doctors... Licensed medical doctors and licensed osteopathic doctors could give you any type of a note, okay? So I'm not able to do that. I can't do that for you, so I just want to state that. However, I do not believe it's legal for an employer to fire anyone over not getting this. I don't know that. I'm not an attorney. You can't quote me on that, but you might want to look it up, um, because if some people have specific issues and they simply don't want to for, uh, depends on the state, I guess, philosophical reasons, um, that's for schools, for, uh, what is it, religious reasons, then there, there's different ways. So, but again, I, I, it's just not a topic that I could provide advice for you on. So unfortunately, I have to refrain from uh, being able to give any more information. All right. Let's see. Well, I want to do one more question today. It's from Rebecca. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I'm 11 months postpartum, and my hair is starting to get very, very dry to the point that it's snapping off all around, constantly frizzy and matted. I've never seen it like this before. I'm still breastfeeding, so I know I can't do many protocols in terms of detox, but just wondering what you'd recommend in the meantime. I also noticed my baby's hair is doing the same thing. I'm guessing it's from some malabsorption of nutrients uh, or stress, or maybe thyroid. Just a bit of a background. I did an organic acids test two weeks before. I found out I was pregnant, and it came back with high clostridia, two mold markers, markers uh, quinolinic acid being high, lactic acid high. All right. Yeah, Rebecca, happy to help with this. You know, I've done a show on um, hair loss and women's hair health as well, and typically it is estrogen, progesterone issues, low thyroid, as well as low minerals in the body. So let me give you one more. 
Well, let me give you, so, so I've done, a, again, I've done a bunch of shows in this, but the issue is when you are sustaining two lives, yours and that of your babies, you need a lot more micronutrients. Do you need as many macronutrients? Like, do you need to eat a thousand more calories a day? No, typically like 250 to 400 more calories a day for uh, breastfeeding women. So what do you do? Well, you eat a little bit more calories, good, healthy food. However, you need more micronutrients, not just for nursing, but also to repair your body and rejuvenate your body after having just built another life over the course of 10 months, right? So that is why, again, hopefully you've listened to a lot of my podcasts on pregnancy. I definitely recommend daily foundational protocol level two or level three. That's gonna give you all the vitamins you need, like vitamin C, all your B vitamins, zinc. Um, Remember, you need zinc, vitamin C that are crucial for uh, your hair, skin, nails. So I would do daily foundation protocol level two. You can find this at eco.life. And I would also add in the advanced collagen support. And that's something I would feel comfortable with my wife taking uh, if she was nursing uh, or even pregnant. And that is uh, a collagen-based product with three uh, patented versions of collagen that allow for less animal product to be used and also far better absorption. So you don't need to take as much. You can put it in your coffee each morning. You could blend it in your smoothie. But I definitely recommend a smoothie every morning with basically just all the products from the Daily Foundation Protocol Level 2 or Level 3 uh, plus the advanced collagen support. And you should really have everything that you need uh, except you'll want to add some vitamin D to your daily routine if you're not maintaining a daily tan. That's it. That's what I'd recommend. All right. Hopefully this was helpful, uh, Rebecca. And for everyone, I appreciate you tuning in today. Of course, always feel free to share this information with anyone you believe it could serve. And I'll be back tomorrow answering another half dozen questions from our community. Take care, everyone. 